Um, when I saw many times individuals from like Turkey, Middle East, something like that, uh, they, they post many times, sir, I have a doubt. Now in America, if someone says, I doubt, that's like, bitch, you're a liar. <laughs> okay? And that's how I take it. So I've obviously learned since then that you know, that's not the case. They're saying that they have a misunderstanding and they want me to clarify to help them get to a better understanding about it. So like I said, I'm not the best mentor. Like I'm not the best mentor and I've learned how to do it better, obviously, you know, over the years. I've already said, I'm not gonna sit in front of all of you and, and do the trades and for, you know, cause it's just gonna be someone copying it. And I, I don't want that. It would be in my head and what makes me get in the trade, you're not gonna fully understand and I'm gonna be worrying about that versus, you know, reading price. Cause I'm, it's very, I'm like a dog, I chase cars easily. And that's why trolls fuck with me because they get entertained by it. And I, I generally, I like it too. But this year I just wanted to call, you know, bullshit on everybody else's stuff that, that they have said about me. And I'm not gonna do this type of shit going on you know, forever. I just want to do this one time just to let you know this entire year, everything that's been said about me, I've canceled all that. I cleared my entire schedule, showed you exactly how I teach and how my mentorship has seen for six years plus consistently calling. market consistently outlining it before it happens I've given you a taste of all that this year okay and I am so thankful and appreciative of all of you, you that have given me feedback and your appreciation for the time invested in all of you uh, I'm not removing the videos okay those videos I'm putting on my YouTube channel they are there to stay I'm, I'm doing that I'm nailing them to my channel that way no one can go out there and scam any of any of the people out there like, hey, I got ICT mentorship videos here. You want to buy them? Because they're trying to make ends meet. I've given you enough already this year where Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know, all around the world doesn't need to sell me. I'm, I'm sorry, sell you my videos. And besides, you've already tasted. There's a lot of stuff in those core content videos. But they're just demonstrating concepts, you know, from a narrow perspective about what it is but you're not necessarily being taught where they go they're just the introduction of the individual cogs now people all around the world you know when they get sold on the idea that hey this is what's going to do for you that's why i told everybody when i was going through a mentorship you know, the first year 2016 which i started in august and then we rolled into the final month in august of 2017 that was the end of the core content uh, lessons being given to them and then the rest of it was this me sitting down with them every single day, telling them what the market's going to do and why to expect this and why to expect that. And then we would watch it and I'm 90% you know, accurate with that. So the point was mentoring was me pointing to where they should focus their attention on a given set of markets like the Euro dollar, British pound and the dollar. Now, much like when I first did live streams with GoToWebinar in the first group, you know, I tried to sit down, there was 865 or 864 people that joined my first intake. And just no advertising, just one little tweet and said, here you You got this, this is the deadline, you got to do it by hand, like this day and there it is. So I tried to sit down with everybody and like, I can't look at the, the live stream comments that you guys are doing. May not be actually able to connect right where I'm at because it's a bad area and trees. But uh, I broke up that now I'm seeing all the, the comments pop up. But village and trees. And I tried to sit down with the students. And, and much like right now, you know, you're all in the live chat. 
part of the YouTube and you're you're taking you're, you're posting stuff I can't see it because I'm obviously driving but at the time in 2016 I got 800 plus people in a go-to webinar and I'm trying to sit down and focus to explain what they should be trying to see in price. Not that it's a trade, not that we're not trying to do trades, but I wanted to teach them, kind of like what you've experienced this year, where I, I'd say, look, look at the market right here, what do you see? Okay, that's where that was birthed. It was in the first year mentorship core, you know, first group. What do you see? What do you see in the chart right now? Now, the problem with that is, is there's individuals that came into that fold and you know ongoing when someone comes to me on twitter okay or they find my videos on youtube and they've never really studied what it is or my approach to teaching or even looked at the evidence i provided that number one i can make money my students can make money it's work it's it works and it's highly consistent they they look at one video or they look at one experience they have with me or one lecture that may not be the best one for them to be introduced to me and they quickly think, okay, well, this guy, you know, as soon as they see demo, they're like, oh, this guy's full of shit. It ain't worth watching this because if he was a really good trader, he would be showing me his account number, showing me his trades. He would give me his trading history, his tax ID number, his 10 years of income, you know, reporting to the feds and, you know, social security number, credit card, you know, <laughs> receipt. They would, give, you know, they would want all that stuff. Like, that's something that's reasonable. It's, it's not reasonable. Reasonable is what I've done where if I don't know what I'm talking about, I cannot do this going forward. I point to things and trade things after I talk to you about it. And it's one-sided. And that's what I was trying to do with the first group, but I wanted to ease into the live sessions where they would get a taste of what it is that keeps them from wanting to just simply go in and trade with real money. Now I think I see a lag here, hold on one second. Yeah, it seems like it's lagging. But the first year in my mentorship, when I was doing live sessions, I was trying to teach them to be patient about what it is they're looking for. And a lot of the folks that came in that year were just wanting to be spoon fed. They wanted to be spoon fed signals. And that's just not my bag, I don't, I don't do that. So I set out this year to kind of like cancel everybody's argument against me that had a genuine, sincere doubt. Not that they were, like you see, if, you know, there's a small little sect on the internet that just simply doesn't like me. And that's fine, I, I, you know, I don't really care about that, but uh, there are folks out there that I think they genuinely know I can do everything I've shown you this year and more, but because they don't like the fact that I am the way I am and I say everything else is bullshit and it doesn't work as well as this that right there immediately divides the, the audience either you're on my side of the story I don't want to say team because I don't need a team either you see things the way I see it or then this guy's an asshole you know he's he's arrogant he's you know a narcissist and you know all those things are true but it doesn't change the fact that the things that I'm teaching you and trade with are the market and I want folks to test it themselves. It may not resonate with you. You might like Bollinger Bands and you might like all those things that you learned in textbooks and they might be working for you if you have a good mon money management approach. But you're not gonna get as precise as what I'm doing. Like nobody's, nobody's touching that. And I wanted to step out here on Twitter this year and cancel everything that Mr. Benny E. Mini, okay, put out there saying about me that was all lies, all bullshit, okay? Now, I could have done a very terrible thing this entire year and basically victimize him like he's tried to make me out to be. I'm, I'm bipolar, but no one's life was threatened, <laughs> okay? And I, I know why he did it. He's trying to draw a crowd. And some of, most of everything he said, really, was all exaggerations and bullshit. So I came out and showed you exactly what my mentorship group have seen every single year I'm not two-sided when I give an analysis the only time I'll do that is when I'm admitting before I even talk that okay right now I don't have an opinion or a bias I'll say hey look you know this is a time when there's low probability 
and then I'll outline both sides of the marketplace. Now, I am telling them at the same conversation that I am not saying this so that I can come back and say, see, I'm right. I've never done that. That's not my interest there. But when I tell you, look at what you see here in the chart right now and note this level, okay, I'm basically tipping my hand to you. I'm showing you my cards. That's my right now current bias, and I'm looking for something. It doesn't necessarily mean that that trade idea is in formation right then. It just means that I'm looking for something that will lead to a bridge between the current market price right now and when I'm pointing to a specific level. If it's above the market price, that means what? I'm expecting something bullish. That's not a trade signal. I'm not giving you trade advice. It's just me tipping my hand, showing you my cards, that in my own real account, I'm looking to put something on. And you now know a setup, a formation with that 2022 mentorship model. That is a absolute ATM machine. It is the easiest fucking thing you're ever gonna find in trading that is so highly precise. It's a complete system. There's no anything needed to it. You don't need to have all this other horse shit like I've added to it, okay, because th that's all bullshit. You don't need to change my names and call it supply and demand because that has nothing to do with it. You don't have to do anything Elliott Wave. You don't have to have anything harmonic. It is a complete, perfect, perfect system. Completely perfect. The only thing it's lacking is your specific risk parameters that makes up your money management model. Are you willing to risk like a quarter percent of your account per trade or 1% or 2%, which is the industry standard? I don't think anybody that's had less than two years trading experience should be risking 2%. And that's, and that's the truth because you could be tricked into, like when I first started trading, after my first soiree, <laughs> hang on, I look like I'm lagging here. In my first uh, year of finding profitability, it was all hinging on random luck. So you can think that you know how to do this but to find out later on you're really not able to really do it as well as you think you did. And I, I was humbled like that in 1993. I, I thought I had it figured out, but the only thing I was doing was buying in bullish markets. We're almost at the property, by the way. But uh, the, the questions that come up about me all the time are, you know, if this guy was really this, or he would do this if he did that. Now that's your opinion about me. You don't even know who I am. Like you don't know nothing about me. None of you really do. And it's never really been about me, which I guess in a way by me doing the, the approach I used, it, it causes intrigue and interest and everybody wanted to be the person to, to show more about who I was. Uh, well, you know, if you're gonna do that and be honest, uh, well, I don't have a problem with that. But when you make up stuff and say, I'm poor, that my children live in trailer parks, they don't live in trailer parks. Caleb lives at 677 Iron Gate, the, the house I just drove from, okay? That's where he lives. That's Caleb's house, okay? So I downsized to get them all adjusted to that home to teach them how to operate and be young, effective adults. You know, you just don't turn you know, $700,000 house over to a 20 year old that's never had a home before. They got to learn how to do those things to take care of it. And that's what they've been doing. So now the time has come, you know, for us to, uh, to move away from them. And Caleb will be without me in the house. He has been a socially awkward person his entire life, okay? I can say that because I'm his dad. So I had to be hands-on with him and show him how to take care of a property, okay? It's not like you know, you go rent an apartment and if something goes wrong, well, hey, rental office, go fix this for me. It's your fucking problem. You know, you got to deal with it yourself. And I don't want him doing things in his house that would obviously tear it up and then say, hey, dad, <laughs> what do I do with this? I don't want to be burdened by that. Okay, because I'm not a handyman. I'm the checkbook guy. You know, if something needs fixed or repaired or whatever, I'm looking for somebody that knows how to do it. I'm, I've never been a handyman. Which, by the way, this guy that I bought this house from, he's a chemical engineer. He used to be, uh, you know, 
in the professional industry and actually was working in oil futures, which was very fascinating. I, I wish I had had more time to talk to him, but very, very smart guy. And he put so many like control systems in this house that are amazing. Like I'm really like fascinated with how he did everything, but I'm not on that level like he is. Like he's obviously very, very smart and knows the intricacies of everything. And he tried to explain the pool because it's a pretty, you know, intricate system. And I, I honestly, I grew up living in my aunt and uncle's house and it was a simple little chlorine pool. Okay, you check the pH, you know, throw some shock in it, you, you skim it, run the filter here and there. And that's it. That's a pretty much, it's a simple thing. This pool... that I had to block it out when I went to the Batman secret entrance <laughs> and it, was a, it was a real thick area of uh, trees that we just don't have a connection really well with it when we drive through but anyway give me one more second here I wasn't talking a couple of seconds ago because it looked like uh, I broke up and lost the connection. So, before I obviously go in here, I just want to remind you that, again, this it's not finished because we just literally received the property in our hands and the transfer of ownership was done at 3 o'clock yesterday. The folks I purchased it from, the very old couple, you know, they're they're moving to Florida, and they used to snowbird from here in Florida, and for a house they built in 2018, they were barely ever in it, and it was barely used, but they had a lot of furniture and stuff in it, and because they're going down in size, they can't take all the furniture, so they left some pieces. They asked if I would let them do that and I was like yeah it's fine I really wish I would have had their movers take the stuff out and at least put it in like the garage because this stuff is huge like it's really heavy stuff and I just you know <laughs> I wish I would have really thought about what I was giving them an agreement to they could have taken it out of the upstairs but nonetheless uh, I'm not doing this to show off okay but I just want to kind of like put this little bullet point here just because someone says ICT lives in a cookie cutter neighborhood just because ICT doesn't show you how ICT has lived okay none, none of this is you're not you're not entitled to any of this okay now most of my audience doesn't really give a shit about this stuff they don't really care they just like the idea that I'm teaching and they see it in the charts and that's how it's really I guess really what it's supposed to be all about and you know, how I live, where I sleep, what I drive, how much money I have in the bank account, what I made trading, what I made selling mentorship. You know, frankly, that's none of your damn business, okay? It's none of your business. It's nobody's business to know how much anybody else has. None of, none of you know my net worth, okay? I've never claimed to have a $750 million net worth. I've never said that. But...
just to put a you know, little nail in the coffin of Mr. N, uh, Vinny E. Mini. I said that I would come out this year and prove everything he said was bullshit. And I warned him, I told him, I said, what you're doing is actually doing more harm to your own image. I told uh, Vinny, I said, listen, what you're doing is causing more harm to your own image. And you're, you're going to end up breaking yourself trying to say these things about me. Now, I could have done a defamation lawsuit, and I still can. But frankly, you know, I don't really care. I mean, if he wants to continuously make more videos, I mean, whatever. I guess if that's what entertains him and his, his viewers, that's, that's, that's fine, I guess. I'm trying to get my wires here in my pocket. Can you see me? Is it live? I'm asking because I see uh, it looks like I'm lagging. Okay, good. All right. So uh, this is my uh, 2021 Corvette that they tell you that I flip Corvettes. <laughs> I like white because I like white. Okay. If it's uh, cool enough for the Pope, it's cool enough for me. No, I'm not Catholic. So I'm probably going to trade this one in for a Z06, same color though, but convertible if I can get it. Until then, this is mine. That's the only way I'm going to separate with this car. I like it. I love it. But anyway, this door, folks, give me a second here. Got to get the key here to this vacant house that... Mr. Roger Banks says it wasn't my house. <laughs> this thing is like a tank. Like this door swings on ball bearings. It's all steel construction. It literally feels like I'm opening up a vault door. Like it looks like, I don't know, man. It, it's like a, it feels like a vault door to a bank. Bank of ICT. All right, so there's the old whip. All right, so this is uh, this is the stairway, which is really pretty in my mind. I think this is very, very done. The whole house was done center line. So while I've never really had a, a, a fascination or a, an affinity for doors that have open glass where you can see into the property, like I don't, I don't like that. But because the way they designed this house here, they can look in my house, but they can't see us in the house. They can see all the architectural, you know, loveliness about everything, but they can't really see what's going on. So I'm gonna make this kind of quick, because it's really boring. There's really no, uh, give me a second, I gotta let my whistle. I guess we'll do the upstairs last. But over here, this is the shack guest bathroom. Okay. Nice little, nice little sink there. Chandelier up there. I've had nicer things than this, folks. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> but my wife and I saw this and she fell in love with this house. Like she fell in love with this thing. And see like that hutch right there, man, that is like, it's so heavy. Like I can't, uh, that hutch is so heavy. I can't imagine moving that. Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But anyway, uh, here is the living room. I guess you call it, they call it the, the great room. Up there 
is where the real magic is going to be happening. Don't worry, I'll show you in a second. But uh, this is looking out back here. All right. So there's the morning room area. All that property, all back here. And I have about four acres of all this wooded area back there too. I own all that. It's all mine. So they can't build a house behind me. Um, I, I got, I, I guess, a, maybe two and a half acres going that direction through the woods. There's another community over there. So they have a house back there. Um, they're nice homes too, but nothing like this neighborhood. But uh, his, this is all the French doors. That's my bedroom over there for all you stalkers. Trust me, I got brass fans. You don't want to be coming over here and visiting un unannounced. Give me a second. So uh, there's a fire pit here. Right there. We asked to keep all this furniture simply because I don't know how I'm going to pick out stuff that I'm going to like, but it just gives us something to flop on out here and you know, we have friends or whatever come over and have something to sit on. I just let them keep that here. They didn't take it. But this is the pool it's covered up for right now. All this stuff is going to be changed. This pool house is going to get knocked down and I'm having a bigger one. So about six times this size pool house, I'm building that. It's going to have like the grill, the whole, the whole shebang. Uh, this is, I mean, it's quaint. It's nice. It works for what they have here, but like all this, this is all, all going to be done hardscaped. I'm going to have a uh, waterfall here some fire pits and such, and this is gonna actually go out a little bit more, but uh, it's a fireplace right there too. But that's the, that's the view out here. I came in here last night to make sure everything was locked up and such, and there was deer all right up in here and all right in here. And I love doing, like, like seeing that, and at the other house, I would tell you like on Saturday, you know, type out stuff, say I'm sitting here and I'm watching the deer come down the hill, whatever. Here, you know, they're, they're literally out here in my backyard. So that's the, that's the property over here. And let's go back inside. I'll show you all this stuff. I'm probably going to break up if it looks like I'm lagging or whatever. I'll pause for a moment or two, but I know I can't read your your comments that you're putting in the chat but if you would just keep doing that because that if I can see that you should be able to hear me even if you want to call me a fraud <laughs> I'm just looking to see if this you know the you know, scrolling messages are going to continue that's just the line to the pump when the water builds up I got to get all those leaves off here they'll they'll not be able to uh, suck that water off the top so there's one, two, three, four sets of French doors, and then I have two sets of French doors and the master. Not bad for a little shack in Maryland. So they originally wanted to list the house for almost 2.3 million. And because of the change in the market, uh, their listing agent said, look, you know, you're gonna have to get down to like to 2 million mark. So they listed it for 1,999,000 and I went in trying to do a low ball, see how fast they wanted to sell it. They didn't take 1.8. Then I came up to 1.925, and they said, come up 50,000 more and it's yours. So without all the other bullshit to the story, they accepted the 1.92, uh, I'm sorry, 1.975. And you can see that's the price on the Zillow now. It's, it was sold yesterday at 3 o'clock to me. Nice morning room, really nice, uh, lets the outside in. Here's the kitchen, here's the MTV Cribs refrigerator. These things are nice. I had one a little bit bigger than this before. What's in this refrigerator? Sailboat fuel and Klondike bars. They have grandkids, so <laughs> they left them, I guess. They left them and they left marshmallows and graham crackers and chocolate bars and said, enjoy your fireplace. So, make some s'mores. 
<laughs> and here's the, uh, I guess the, what would you call this? What do, you, what do you guys call this in your neck of the woods? You call this the counter? You call this your, like, what would you call that to you? My other uh, property I just uh, drove from, Caleb's house, I have an 11 and a half foot uh, long quartz top, uh, countertop, in yeah, an island. There you go. I just want to, because I wasn't sure if all you guys called it the same thing. I like all the archways in here. It's really nice. Everything in here is custom. Like, everything's custom. Nothing is uh, cookie cutter. Here's the uh, butler's pantry. They left us two little cookie jars. Refrigerator down there. And over here is the laundry room. Now, I'm, I'm the type of guy that... This here, these washer and dryers, you know, I, I could never use someone else's washer and dryer. So these are gone. Like I'm getting new ones installed. So that these are all types of things I have to do. And I'm having a, the whole house painted inside. I'm not sure if you can see it, but they left their dryer sheets here. But you see that like little discoloration there? If I see just one of these circles in any room, the whole house has to be painted. So it's... Uh, it's a sickness. Over here, this is the main garage. So in this one, and I'm sure the video isn't gonna give you the real feel for it, but I can put four cars in this garage. One, two, this way. Here is where my big truck's gonna be that I paid for, I'm not leasing. <laughs> Actually, I have no leases right now. No leases whatsoever. And I have you know, this one here. So one, two, three, four cars can fit in this garage. And there's a doorway that goes out to, uh, look at that. It's one of those demo vets. So over here, Come down this way. I want to make sure I turn the lights off as I go. That is a library den type thing. So you can see that. There you go. A fireplace. That's a gas one. I ran it last night. They've never used it. And whenever you have a gas fireplace and you turn on the first time, it puts off this weird odor, but once you burn it off a few times, then it's fine. But this desk here, some of you probably don't care, but when I first came in and I saw the property, we were the first couple to see it, I fell in love with this desk. This desk is over 100 years old, $8,000. That's what it's worth. He bought it from an antiquer, and he did not want to, he did not want to leave it here. And I just said, listen, you want to sell the house? You leave the desk. And he pushed a couple times, and I said, no, I want the desk. So I got the desk. The, uh, these are Canadian floors, real, not laminated. It, like, it's, like, I feel like I'm walking around on concrete. Like, it's, this is built really, really well. Uh, another gas fireplace. This is master and i'm going to tell you for as big as this house is this is the smallest master bedroom i've ever had in my homes apart from when i used to live in an apartment place you know the picture that you see with uh, cody where he's sitting at the that glass table give me a second here <clears throat> here's one of my closets <clears throat> now I say that because I have more clothes than my wife. <laughs> so in my own house that uh, we just left from, it's Caleb's. He's is my wife's closet. A little chandelier and all that business. This is what she gets. 
So she'll have some room still in this one. Mainly it's her shoes. And leave me a comment in the live chat if it's like that in your house. Your wife have a 250 pairs of shoes because my wife's got lots and lots of shoes. So here is the shower. Where does ICT take a shower? Here. So. And. Where am I? All right, let's go over here. This is coming out of the master. I asked to keep those birds on the wall. I think it gives it character. My wife hates that. She hates these friggin' birds. I love them. I think it gives the feeling like, like they were in the pool and they got startled and they flew away. That's the, that's the impression I get when I look there. But it's got a coffer ceiling in the dining room area. See that right there. All right, so let's go downstairs. I'm probably gonna break up. So here is the stairs going down on the steps. To the basement. Now I turned all the lights off to this wine holder because we don't do wine. We're going to store ginger ale. And not ginger ale. What's that shit called? Um... Apple cider, you know, there's big bottles of apple cider. They used to see them advertised in the in the grocery stores around the holidays for, for people that don't drink alcohol like me. My kids, they've been raised on drinking apple cider from those bottles since, you know, they were little. So I get them like the little flutes, little wine glasses, and I pour it and it sparkles like champagne. <laughs> So we'll put a bunch of them in here for my youngest son. He's uh, he's the only one that's going to be living here with us. The older ones are going to be living in the house you just saw me leave from on Iron Gate. So a little chiller down there. And have this area right here. So. That's that room. There you go. And turn it off. This was neat. I wish I would have had this on the uh, house I had when I was raising the kids. Because it would have been nice for them to had this for them and their friends that come over. <clears throat> I'm wearing a, uh, hang on one second. I'm wearing a apparatus that wraps around my torso and it stimulates my back. So it's like shocking me. Sometimes it hits me really, really hard <laughs> and it feels like a thousand bee stings. So, if I sound like I'm, my voice is breaking up, I'm not getting emotional about anything. It's just, it hurts, but it's a good pain. And I have to use this thing to sometimes just move around. Motorcycle accident destroyed my back. Now here, let me see here. Can't see the light switch. There it is. That's looking down at the theater. I'm, I got a four person sauna that's going to go here. So that's really good. I don't know if you ever used a sauna before, but yeah. Whether you have a bad back or not, it's just really, really good. So he has a work area. He was always doing projects and stuff. And this is not me. This is all going to get turned into a library. So this is all going to be from this here, 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 all this is going to be walled in. I'm going to have bookshelves in here. 
because I have shit tons of books. Water softener, storage area, all the other crap that you see in houses. I know most of you don't care about this stuff, but I know there's some people that just simply want to know what's going on. <laughs> and they want to see what it looks like. So I'm showing you. All right. And I didn't go inside the theater yet. So let's do that. This right here, when I first saw it, I was like, okay. Uh, that's one of my favorite childhood memories seeing dolls here. okay so there's the twilight setting for the theater can you see the lights A second here. Okay, thank you. All right, and then right here. Here's the theater. Okay, so if you're gonna have a theater in your house and a projector, you don't keep old furniture in it and treat it like your trading office. You have another room in your house and do that. He did a really good job putting everything into this house. It's nice. They have a lot of grandkids. So they you know, set up a lot of stuff for the house for them. And being 50 years old and five kids, I'm, I'm bound to be grandfather someday, right? <laughs> so I was like, you know what? This one works. We, we were not going to go back up to a big house, but uh, I got inspired by an asshole this year to do it just to spite. So I didn't pay $900,000 for my house and claim it's a $1.5 million house. I spent $2,013,000 for this house. It's not mortgaged. You're welcome to go out there and do a $200 title search if you don't believe me. And if you find out differently. Say I'm a fraud and prove it. <laughs> but, you know, claiming that I can't do this, claiming I can't do that, that kind of stuff. My grandfather was like a, a Navy man. He said, boy, if someone ever tells you you can't do something, you find five ways to do it and shove it right up their ass. So that's what 2022 has been about. Hang on. This thing is cycling in my back. Whew. And you're probably asking, what the hell are you talking about? Let me show you real quick. It is a, it's like a, like a girdle thing that wraps around my body. And it has a control like that. So it stimulates my back and sends in like really, really strong shocks to my spine and all the nerves around it. So it allows me to sometimes be able to walk. Like it's very, very difficult for me to lift anything heavy You know, just with the, uh, you know, just with my arms or whatever, because I can't, I can't support the, uh, 
the weight. Because if you lift something with your arms, your back's involved. And I have about four vertebrae that got pretty much smashed. I've done everything I could to avoid surgery because I just don't want to do it. Okay, so this stuff here, <clears throat> this is where my trading office is going to be. Now, this furniture, I don't want. <laughs> so, I got to figure out where I'm going to go with it. But once everything's done, I'll show you what it looks like. But I warned you that it's underwhelming because there's nothing in here. This dick. See, you, asshole. <laughs> Here's a bathroom for that one. There you go. So this is the only room on the upper side on this wing of the home. And this is looking out over. Okay. And then coming down. This is the only bedroom that will be occupied by my youngest son. More furniture that I got to get a home for. Here, this is the bunk room. All custom. This house has five zones in it for heating and air conditioning. So as big as it is, the gas nitro bill here is $200 a month, which is nuts. Because at my house, right now, I spend about $479 a month because it's not zoned. It's a simple little Ryan house, which is, you know, let's be honest, folks. If you're in your 20s and you get a house like that, you gonna bitch? No. He has more room than he needs. <laughs> and you know, he doesn't stand out. He doesn't look like this house does here. And that's fine. That stove's really cool. But um, this is what two million buys in Maryland, in Harper County. And I don't know how they build shacks in your area, but this isn't cookie cutter. It's not 900,000. There's nothing like this house anywhere here. And I like it. My wife loves it. I could have bought the home all the way down the end of this road here. There's a 11,000. Don't quote me on the second part of it, but it's like, like 11,000. 400 square feet and they went just under two million dollars for that too just came up for sale friday if this deal would have fell through and i couldn't have bought this one i had it already lined up that i was going to buy that one down there but the only problem is it has just three car garage so i would have had to build an external you know garage like this one was here but uh 
I mean, it's, this is good size. I mean, this is plenty of room for us. Three people. I'm not going to bump into my wife a lot. My youngest son will have pretty much reign of the house. And, you know, like I said, we're not stepping on each other's toes. Probably more than I need in many of your eyes, but, you know, I don't live like everyone else, and you don't live like me, and it doesn't make a difference what anybody's opinion is. You have to live where you want to live, right? So I, I, I could have, you know, left things alone and let you all think <laughs> whatever you wanted to think, uh, but I'm not wired that way. So over 100 and some videos were put out about me that I'm broke. I live in a slum. My kids live in trailer parks. They don't live in trailer parks. And I spent more money this year than the guy down in Texas has. I don't have a mortgage on my properties. I don't have any leases on any of my vehicles, not one right now. When I found the GPS trackers on my cars, I just turned them in and got new ones and paid cash for them, like that one right there. That's not a lease. Now, this is the part that you need to be paying attention to. By me showing you any of this, okay, by me showing you cars, live trades, real accounts, homes, I walked you through, I told you I was buying this house before it went under contract, and then I told you exactly what I paid for it, and then it settled out yesterday for the same amount of money. I'm in this house. They don't give you a key by yourself to go look at houses. Okay, I, it's mine. I didn't do any lending. I'm not bragging, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm grabbing you by your lapels and shaking you. Listen, stop believing bullshit artists, liars, clout chasers, okay? I'm not renting this house to look like I have money. I'm not showing you this house to say I'm a profitable trader. I'm not doing this to have more love given to me. I'm showing you so that way you can now think about what I've done up to now. None of this helps you become a better student to me. It doesn't make you a better trader. It's not going to make your trades more profitable. It's not going to give you a better perspective on trading. It doesn't make you my best friend. We're not any closer. I'm not going to go to the bar and hang out with you. You get what I'm saying here? All this stuff is not necessary. It's not necessary. But because I've had so many people believe these jokers out there that will say this shit, that have mortgages on their home, tax liens against their properties, busted ass 12 year old trucks. I literally did everything this year to show you that that guy is a fucking liar, <laughs> okay? And yes, I could hit you with a defamation lawsuit and I could get your ass, but this was better. This was better. Because not only did I prove everything I've ever said, I've made more profitable people around the world. I've proved that none of this stuff is needed. I don't need to do this. I've never needed to do this. But I wanted to do it this time because there was an intended purpose. There's a lot of people that saw this goober's videos and said, I'm not going to learn that stuff. And they basically gave themselves no chance. I put it for free, folks, for free. All I got to do is go out there and study it. There's no sales pitch here. I'm not showing you this stuff and doing some smart money concept ripoff for $7.99 because I need money. I don't have a fake plastic plant behind me and a blanket on my window for a cover of a curtain. I'm not showing you rent.
to the MT4 stuff, I'm genuine. I'm as real as anybody could expect someone to be. And if you have not seen that this year, you're blind. That means you choose to remain ignorant. You choose to stay in that mindset. And I don't have any interest in people like you. People that want to come, they want to experience something that's <laughs> unrivaled. They're welcome to do it. Enjoy themselves. Be part of our community that is absolutely free. And I can't tell you how wonderful it has felt this entire year. Like, I feel unshackled. Like, I feel like I've been in prison for the last six years. Being held hostage by not all of my students, but some of them are just unruly, intended to be, you know, bothersome their entire existence. This, you can't make them happy with anything. Nothing you do is going to make certain individuals happy. And they wear, they wear me out. So, this year, even though I've done a lot in terms of providing a connection to a lot of you, it's just the a way for me to find a new outlet to plug into and be inspired. Because my private mentorship, they watched those same videos that you watched me put up on YouTube. The entirety of the 12 month content will be done by this coming Sunday. It'll all be on the YouTube channel. Now, when I said to you all those years that were people saying, can I please join your mentorship when I close it? I'd be like, you don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. The YouTube channel teaches it. Some of you were like, I need something more specific. Which videos do I watch? All of them. Just sit down and pick a, a series and just go through it. They all overlap. But you're not going to learn this with one five-minute video. Now, I mentioned, I don't know what day it was, but I mentioned on, on Twitter that I have an, it was, a, it was a, a Twitter space, which there won't be one now because this is kind of like taking the place for it. I mentioned how that there are people out there doing YouTube channel videos saying, learn IGT mentorship in five minutes. I mean this when I say you're not going to learn this with a five minute trainer video. You're not. Believe me, there is no other way except for what was shown to you in that mentorship video series. The first five or six videos, that's, that's it. Now, if you see somebody say, okay, if you look at this fair value gap here after the shift in market structure, what makes a shift in market structure? How do you constitute trusting what is in your chart, a shift in market structure or a stop run that's gonna continue going the other direction once it comes back down in? That is answered in all the, supp uh, the supplementary lectures and teachings. You know, the stuff that nobody wants to listen to. <laughs> All of it's there for your edification in your, in your learning. If you choose to be lazy, okay? And I had people pay me $2,000 and still stay fucking lazy. Give me something easier than this. Or you're, you're a fraud. Okay. I'll do you one better. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to make people all around the world profitable. And they don't have to do a year. They don't have to do... 12 months, and that's what the 2022 mentorship was for. And as more questions came in, I added things that wasn't really intended to be taught, like index trading, the PM session, and, and, the, and the afternoon session. I wasn't going to touch on any of that. But people were like, hey, can you add this to the afternoon and give me a way to do it? Sure. Sure, I'll do that. 
because I don't need your fucking money, okay? I don't need any more clout. I'm not trying to be, you know, bigger than I already am because, frankly, it's a little intimidating for me to be like this recognized now. And some of you are like, oh, you're putting your address on the Internet. Let me explain to you. I did this for that very reason. I wanted everyone to see that I don't live in squalor, that I can do so much more, but you're not entitled to see that. Vinny, you were never entitled to see this, but by contrast, I wanted to show you you're a liar. Everything you've said for a year is a lie. Everything I've shown this year is 100% certified grade A truth and proof, and I prove it every fucking week over and over and over again. And I have students that did not pay me that are proving that it works, and now they're making money. They're making ends meet. And let me tell you something. That's results that scream. You're never going to convince any of you, once you start making money, no one's going to tell you it's bullshit. (laughs) <laughs> nobody's going to convince you or tell you what you are doing right now and learn from me didn't even pay for it now you're walking a walk that nobody could do for you and somebody's going to tell you that what you've learned is fraud it's flawed logic fake no you can tell these people, fuck you and go pound sand, dude. Chase your clout somewhere else. So I had all kinds of, oh, man, I had evil intentions last fall. It didn't sound like it when I was addressing it. I said, just sit back and watch what I do next year. You just sit back and watch what good old ICT does. And I did it. Everything I fucking promised you, I've done. Proved you I ain't broke. Prove that I can trade real accounts. Prove that I can teach it for free and not ask for more money. What mentor is doing that? What educator right now would ever say, you know what, I don't want millions of dollars per month just to release the same videos I already made six years ago? Because it's autopilot. All I gotta do is do what I've been doing on YouTube. Upload, upload upload. No work's necessary. I could be collecting millions of dollars by letting people come into another round of mentorship. But listen to me, folks, that keep asking for this. Why the fuck are you asking to do that? Why the fuck do you ask me, please let me pay you money to learn what you just fucking gave away for free on your YouTube channel? Please let me pay you to be in that group Does that make any sense? I mean, you're learning how to manage money, how to make money, to be profitable. Doing something that you can do for free and wanting to pay more than $2,000 for it doesn't make any fucking sense. So stop asking. I've already gifted the entire industry. The very thing that's been ripped off more than anything existing Since 2016, my shit has been ripped off more than anybody else's stuff. And I'm flattered. Yes, I'll take that as a compliment. But my videos are not coming down, and you don't need to pay for them. And that group that paid me, I'm returning back to them. So that way I can finish out any misunderstandings that they have. Because for a lot of them, what I've done on YouTube aligned all of those little tumblers for them. They figured out what it is they're looking for, how to take that content, put it together in something simple. I can make it extremely complicated. In fact, the charter members know that those 12 models, I complicated them with everything that's taught. I purposely did that. Listen, folks, you're going to be asking me, hey, can I have the charter models? You don't fucking need those charter models because you're not going to be patient enough to wait for those specific setups. They work. They can make money. Lots of fucking money. But they're so specific that I knew that people would want to sell my shit 
So I'm going to give them something hard initially, and I'm going to find those people that were selling. And I got a lot of them. I threw them out. I had fun doing it. But I have a whole lot of them still in there. So what I've created is an opportunity for those individuals to ask me questions, to make sure they understand every single thing from each one of those core content months. When the questions evaporate and I have no more, then that forum is done. Then it's done. I don't need to do that anymore. I'm obligated to that group of individuals. Not, I'm not obligated to you, okay? I'm not obligated to YouTube community. I'm not obligated to Twitter community. But I am obligated to them. And once I finish that, I would like to ask you all, what's your thoughts on... I don't have a Telegram channel active right now. I don't, I don't have that, okay? But... This forum that I have, I know I have people in it that's already sharing like my posts. So that's why I'm trying to finish up with that forum. I want their questions asked so that way I can answer them. And once that I have all those questions answered, I'm killing the forum. There won't be any private mentorship forum because those people will have graduated. Now, if you're in that group, don't freak out. You don't need to freak out. My interest is to take and find, and it may not be Telegram, because honestly, I think the government's going to shut down the Telegram soon, but something to the equivalent. Now, I don't like Discord because it seems too, I don't know, it seems too quirky to me. But I'd like to be able to have a area where everybody can come in and have access to me sharing charts. Like It's kind of like a Twitter I mean, I like Twitter for the simple fact that it's immediate. Like it's right then, right now. It's like a text message that you receive right from me. But it's limited because I can only do like two minutes and 20 seconds. So you know me. <laughs> I can keep going, going, going. And sometimes the really good details require me to talk a little bit about why I'm even bringing it up. Now, the lazy asses, they don't like those types of things, and I'm glad because that means they don't watch my shit anymore and don't waste your time, and I won't be wasting mine. But I think this year you've seen, without a shadow of a doubt, a level of precision that has never been demonstrated before, ever, by anyone. And that's not arrogance. That's just the facts. But... To remove the fucking assholes that are in my forum that have found a, a new way of selling mentorship, <laughs> get in the inside track of ICT's forum. I will share every post that ICT does if you just pay the $50 a month. Here's my PayPal link. Pay through friends and family. So that way you can't do a chargeback on them. So I'm doing the best I can to come up with a way where I'm absolutely 100% free. Nobody does anything in this community where they can take it and sell it. It's all free. That's what I want. I only went to paid in 2016 because I got a case of the ass because all these people that were taking my free videos, my old stuff, and they were selling it. I'm like, who the fuck do you think you are doing that? Like, dude, I did it for free. Why would you take something for free and sell it to people? I, I was pissed off, man. I was raging. And of course, a lot of you were right when you said, what an asshole. You know, he, he started charging money. He was great until he started charging money. <laughs> so I want to return back to that. That's the legacy I want to leave. I don't want to leave with just one year of, okay, here's free teaching, here's this. Like, I just can't, I can't stop teaching. Like, I can't stop doing this. And I love it. I enjoy it. And I think I earned, I think I fucking earned the level of respect that my life's work commands. Because nobody else out there would have done this. 
Nobody would have given this away for free. And I'm going to be real honest with you. If you knew what I know, you wouldn't even fucking teach it. Ever. You would just be out there doing it. Maybe selling signals, but never teaching it. But I have a... I have a promise to keep and a passion to the answer. Every single day I wake up and have new things I want to teach and touch on. When I was sitting in the settlement yesterday purchasing this house, I was thinking, man, I could teach on this topic on Monday. <laughs> and my wife's looking at me like, what's wrong? Are you mad about it? I said, no, I, I, just, I got a really good idea. I don't have anything to write on to write down my idea. Like, I had to borrow her phone to send myself a text message to remind myself this is what I was thinking of. <laughs> Here I am getting ready to spend $2 million for a house, and not my focus is really on doing shit for all of you. <laughs> That's just the way I'm wired, man. I love it. Like, I, I absolutely, because here's the thing that is infectious to me. When I see folks learn how to do this and they see it in their charts and they see it actually unfolding in their charts without me saying anything to it. It's like, man, that, that feedback, that, that connection between a mentor and a student is, it's birthed. Like, no one can take that from you. No one can take that from me. And it's an intimate relationship. At that point, it becomes a connection. And while I've never really shaken any of your hands, I've never met you face-to-face -face except for one, one of my students, Internet students. I've had lots of students prior to you knowing me on the Internet. But I know that that resonation of feeling connected to me. I, I feel that with a lot of you when you give me feedback saying, I see, this, I see this unfolding. I see it working. I see it happening now. And that excitement, that energy, man, that fucking gets me high as shit. I love that. I love it. I remember what it was like for me. But I'm looking around at my friends back when I was younger, 20 years old, and these guys were fucking bums. Like fucking bums. Losers. They didn't want to go to work. They didn't want to save any fucking money. They didn't have their own fucking cars. You know, you know, think about it. You know, if you hang around those types of people, that's what you're going to be. That's what you're going to fucking be. You're going to be a bum. You're going to be a fucking low life that ain't trying to do anything in life. You're not going to reach for the stars. You're not going to try to do better. You're just going to be like, well, why should I do anything more? My friends accept me the way I am. Fuck that. I tried to level them all up. And I saw they were lazy. So I cut them the fuck out of my life. And some of you guys are like, oh, that sounds harsh. Let me tell you something. If I didn't do that, I would not be where I am today. And that's just the simple fucking facts. That sounds, oh, that sounds inconsiderate. You're an asshole. No, I'm not. I'm a realist. Do you want dead weight hanging on your ass all the time saying, hey, man, I'm hitting rough times. I can't, I can't make my... Uh, I can't make my credit card payment. I overextended myself. I bought some stupid shit I shouldn't have bought. Can you bail me out? Yeah, sure, man. Everybody fucks up once in a while. Here, take this. And, you know, here's something extra. Do something else with it. Two months later, the same shit, same person. Hey, man, I fucked up again. You know, can you help me out? Uh, yeah, man, but you got to stop doing this. Okay, yeah, you're right, man. I fucked up. Four months later, same shit. Yeah, fuck you. Get the hell out of here. You're a bum. You're a fucking bum. I'm not an ATM machine for bums, okay? This is the way it is. And that's my mentality of why I came out and started teaching this for free. Because I get a lot of fucking intel from other people saying, a lot of you fucking bums out there taking my shit, selling it, because you can't do it. Look around, man. Stop being so fucking lazy. Start putting some effort into it, and you make more money than you can selling it. It's too hard to sell it when I'm doing this for free. When they see innercircletrader.com in the watermarks, like, okay, yeah, I paid for this. Well, let me see more about this guy. And they fucking see this shit for free. That's a hard sell, man.
That's a hard sell. And that's why I did it. <laughs> and yes, it gives me a fucking hard on every time somebody finds out about it and says, you know what? This guy's a, he, he's a piece of shit. He's taking your stuff and he's selling it and he's pretending to be you. And no, I'm not on Telegram right now. I'm not on Telegram. No, I'm not on Discord. Like I said, I could be your best friend, man. I could be your best friend. I'm not here to be a dick. I'm not trying to be someone else's competition because to be real honest with you, none of you motherfuckers are competition for me. None of you are. Not one of you educator, one of you trader motherfuckers are even close to me, okay? That's just the reality. So don't bring my fucking meme up and I won't come to your fucking shit and wreck it. That's the simple facts. Don't do anything bringing up my fucking name because the only thing you're gonna do is destroy your own image. Your own image gets destroyed. If you act like a fucking nail, I'm gonna hammer you. But if you wanna be civil and cordial, that's the way I wanna roll, man. Like I wanna be, I wanna be the good guy. I wanna be the nice person. I don't like being the asshole. Because once it starts, it just revs up. And then it becomes all-consuming. And while some of you probably like that part of me, I don't like that part of me. Man, I like those birds. <laughs> and I love them more that my wife hates them. Is that mean? Ladies, if you're in here, is that mean of me to love it more because she hates it? That's what brings spice to our relationship. <laughs> I got to get my victories when and where I can, man. But anyway, I, I could sit here and waste your whole afternoon talking about stupid shit. That doesn't really mean anything. But hopefully... This experiment on social media has shown you that every time that someone has asked me in the past, hey, can you show us your cars? Can you show us where you live? Can you show us your face? Can you show us a live account? Can you show trading, entry, stop loss, target, managing a trade outside of a demo account? When I said to you, all of you, you don't need that. If you need that, that means that you are doubting yourself because you didn't put the time and energy into testing it. If you back test it, I promise you, you're going to see all the evidence that's necessary. What's lacking is your experience. And that comes by simply doing, showing up every single day. When you don't want to do it, you're fucking tired because you got the last two days wrong. And you're like, man, I feel... This is probably never going to happen for me. That's the time you dig in and say, I'm going in and I'm studying. You don't take anybody else's bullshit. You don't listen to somebody else's fucking opinion about me, about the concepts, about trading, or you. And you just dig in. You dig the fuck in and you study. Right when you feel like you don't want to do more of it, that's exactly when you fucking study more. Because that's laziness creeping in. Laziness fucking kills success. It kills it. I experienced it when I was a younger man. I let depression rob me of success. That, I mean, I could have had it sooner. I could have had it sooner. But, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to turn these fucking lights off out here. Got too many switches in this house. That's the fans. That's another set of lights. And that's not turning shit off either. How the hell do I turn them lights off? Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> One of my sons were like, you know what we should have done, Dad? We should have done a YouTube uh, sitcom, Growing Up ICT. Like, what's it like growing up under me as a dad? Man, <laughs> I think it would have been picked up and syndicated immediately because 
just the interactions between me and my wife. <laughs> that would have been enough. That would, that, that would sell the show. And I don't even need to talk about trading, but... Yeah, it's uh, hopefully been... Hopefully, in my mind, it's been a success for you all to see that none of this stuff's been necessary. And I'm going to close it in two minutes. In the chat window, or what is it, the live chat of YouTube. Has me, has me, has it helped you become more certain about what it is I teach and show examples of? Has any of these personal things I've shared with you helped you understand what I teach? Has it been any clearer or improved upon by me sharing this stuff? Be honest. That's not the answer I fucking wanted to see. You're all saying yes. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Come on. Seriously? <laughs> the point was, you should be saying no. In reality, no, it just didn't make me a better student. It doesn't make me a better trader because I saw you spend $2 million buying cars and houses and doing shit that's outside of the charts. None of this stuff matters. You can't live in this house with me. You don't ride it around the car with me. So why the fuck does that even matter? It doesn't matter. That's why I've never done these things. Because it doesn't do anything to your learning. It does nothing to help you. What it does, it inspires you to want to buy courses and join signal services. That's what it does. Give me a number one in the chat room or the chat window. If you understand that showing image stuff like this, flashing money, purchasing shit, show a number one if you understand now that it's only going to benefit people that sell courses or sell signals. Now, compare and contrast this kind of stuff, which I am absolutely 100% opposed to. I hate this kind of shit. Because if you're going to be willing to show what you bought as a car, what you drive around, where you sleep, then guess what you should be able to do even easier? You should be able to sit the fuck down, explain what you do as a trader, explain the logic, then outline the market before it happens, which is what I do on Twitter, and then go into a live account and trade that motherfucker so precisely that nobody can argue against it. Now, put a number two if that's the better proof or evidence that you know what the fuck you're doing. I just ran into the fucking chandelier. <laughs> Blooper. There you go. That's all I wanted to cultivate in the beginning by not showing you what my personal life looks like. Because all that's going to do is elevate you to unrealistic expectations when you first start. You can't go out and buy $2 million fucking houses just because you watch my fucking videos. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that you're going to learn how to read the price action and find profitability if you work towards it. How much money can you make? You tell me. Because there ain't no fucking limit. There's no limit to it. But some of you want unrealistic expectations fulfilled on laziness. Give me a couple minute video. Get to the point. You could have made that video in five minutes, ICT. You talk too much. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking bum. Okay, that's bum mentality. Bum mentality is 
Give me it right now. It's already two days fucking late. And once you do it, it still won't be good enough. Bums are in education. Bums are on Instagram. Bums are on Twitter. Bums are making courses out of other people's shit, namely mine. I never need the trade ever again. Ever. I don't need to ever do it again. Not one fucking trade do I need to make. I don't need to teach anything more. I have a lot of stuff that I want to teach and share. But I've done everything that anybody with common sense would expect from someone that knows how to do it. I've shared that for free now. Tell ICT to get in Robbins. Motherfucker, you get in Robbins with me. That's why I'm here. I'm barking and nobody else wants to do shit. I walked in everybody else's live stream, raised my leg and pissed all over their shit and said, now talk your shit. Nobody's there. Nobody's talking. They're coming up with some Mickey Mouse <laughs> fucking ripoff of my, my name of Smart Money Concepts. Smart Raja Concepts. Motherfucker, take your shit into Robbins. It, it takes MT4. Let's go. Let's fucking go. It's live stream. Come on in. Play in my motherfucking playground, bitch, because I'm in real accounts for real. I ain't doing some fake ass broker bullshit. I came out on Twitter, like I said, Tom Dante, motherfucker. You ain't escaping this shit either. Talking all that bullshit. Oh, yeah, ICT, he ain't coming back to Twitter. He be ran off in a fucking week. This is the longest fucking week you've ever seen, isn't it? I'm about to pass his fucking ass on Twitter. <laughs> you guys, I know you secretly love me, you bitches. All you hating motherfuckers. <laughs> I give you a purpose. That's cool. You don't have to learn from me. If I motivate you to hate the world more in your own existence, maybe that'll change you over time. Anyway, as fun as this has been and satisfying, maybe not so much satisfying to you, but very satisfying for me, because I told you all last year, I said, you just sit back. I'm bringing receipts. I'm bringing fucking receipts, okay? None of your little mentors out there are gonna do what I did this year. They're not gonna stop charging. They're not gonna teach something that's so fucking perfect in understanding and delivery and price that other people can quickly go out and learn how to do it not waste a lot of time, get right to the point, ICT. That's the point of the 2022 mentorship. It's 41 fucking videos, and if that's not fucking short enough for you, go fuck yourself, okay? Go fuck yourself, you're a lazy fucking bum, you're never gonna make any fucking money, and that's the real me talking to you when I'm 20 years old, that's what it was like. Go fuck yourself, okay? You don't like the fucking work for it? Go fuck yourself. I don't owe you shit. Nobody owes you shit. Nobody owes you a motherfucking thing, you fucking clowns. Look around, all these people, all different walks of life, different ages, men, women, young guys, old guys, it's all over the world. They're doing it. It costs them nothing but the time and the energy they put into it. And they're proving it works. And I didn't have to do a damn thing. Just 41 videos. But the first six is enough. And all these motherfuckers, I told you, just sit around and you watch who is asking for money at the end of 2022. Because I'm going to tell you something, and this is the fucking bottom line. If a motherfucker says, here's my PayPal link. If a motherfucker says, here's what you have to send me to learn or be a part of my shit. You are a fucking broke bitch that can't make fucking money, you cannot fucking trade profitably because you're asking in panhandling. I walked the walk, I made millions of motherfucking dollars every fucking month, and I said, I can stop and go back to who I really am. To prove to you, I don't need to do that shit. 
How else could I possibly prove it any better than doing it and then saying, I'm stopping. And then do it for fucking free and bring the receipts proving other people are fucking making money with it. There is not another fucking mentor out there that's done that ever, ever. But he doesn't show it with a live account. Motherfucker, I did it in two different brokerage firms. You ain't seen MT4 in years. <laughs> oh, it's fucking delicious, man. This is so fucking delicious. I don't want it to end. I don't want this to end, to be honest with you. I am fucking loving this. But it has to. So here's your fork in the road, you fucking mentor bums. Walk straight. Be honest. And don't be ripping motherfuckers off. Because if you are doing anything with my content, renamed it, everybody knows it. I certainly know my shit. I know when you're talking with my stuff, but change the name of it. I'll put a bullseye on you socially and everybody will call you out as the fucking fraud that you are. And that goes out to every one of you. But I see, T, you're putting your address out there. You better be careful, motherfucker. Run up and get done up. Simple as that. I don't live my life fearful. I don't do that. I've given all of you a gift. I give you a gift. And some of you motherfuckers want to kick me in the fucking face and forget where you got it from. And the only thing I ever asked, this is the only thing I ever asked, and I don't think it's asking too much. You acknowledge it came from me. That's it. Because here's the reason why. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's never been about me. Now, I can be an instrument of menace to accomplish a method and to answer bullshit. I don't like to do that. I don't like to be that kind of guy. And when I'm done talking and I'm driving back to the other house, I'm going to be thinking about the things I said here and some of the things I wish I could have retracted and pulled back because I went too far, too far into it. But sometimes things need to be said. You're never going to understand what it was like to be among people that you're not certain you're going to be able to leave the same way you came in. I used to live my life like that. Are they coming to my door again? Are they going to call me to meet with them one more time? I'm not afraid of that shit no more. I'm not afraid of that. Do you like to think it's all conspiracy and Tom Clancy bullshit? You have no fucking idea. You have no idea. If I'm meant to check out early, guess what? Instant death, instant glory. <laughs> I ain't living life through fear. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about none of that stuff. But you also wouldn't understand what it's like to be in a room breaking down emotionally and psychologically because you can't understand something that you know you're just right on the cusp of understanding. And a still, quiet voice says, look at this. What do you see? Where do you think that came from, folks? Where do you think it came from? It didn't come from a book. It didn't come from another author. That still quiet voice, I learned to trust it. It 
took my attention to things that I would have never seen or recognized. Now, some of you, that may sound like schizophrenia, mental illness. And yes, I do have a mental illness. But bipolar doesn't give you voices in your head. It just, you get revved up or seriously depressed. And you rarely are balanced in between. But the same voice, I know who it is. Some of you would say it's Allah. Some of you would say it's ESP and the universe speaking to you, but I know who it is. His name's Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the absolute caretaker of my whole being and the holder of my soul. And that's why I want you to give me credit because it's all his. It's his. 